Guess Bray. Before we put him into the goddamn barn. Go Where start. did consciousness come from? This, this is, is another, another question. question. Atheists, Atheists can obviously answer, answer better than anyone else. Consciousness is an awareness of your surroundings established by a network of neurons in association with nerve sensors. Some organisms have only a couple of senses, like tactile sensation or homeostasis. Others add a sense of sight or pain without enough of a neural network to be fully aware or even awake. The more synapses you have, the more aware you are, and the more things you can be aware of. I've met believers who think that humans have a soul and animals don't, and because of that... Okay. Awareness. Why in the fuck? Then... The supercomputers are, are are they not conscious? Why is AI why is AI not conscious? The soul is what makes you you. Without if that if you if you did not have a soul, you'd have automatons. Consciousness is the element that let you have free will. Without consciousness, yes, we could have life on this planet, and it would get you along just fine. But it, but it would not be the same. Don't you understand, you fucking flaming jackass? Not that animals are just biological machines that don't really feel anything. Biological machines. That's what we. That's what we would be. If there is no consciousness, if there is no soul, there's this eminent scientist said that sleep is the default position, that consciousness is the glitch. No, 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 consciousness is the soul, stupid fucker. They believe this for no reason and against all reason. I, I know we believe it because it makes damn sense. There's plenty of proof that other animals have feelings, including love and compassion, and not just from mirror neurons. Why does an AI have compassion? It could have a simulated compassion, but it cannot feel compassion as the way a consciousness can, i.e. a soul. Some believers even imagine that a mindless embryo is somehow infused with a consciousness once they're infused with a soul, even though you can't remember anything from that first year when your brain wasn't adequately developed. The study of Evo Devo notes parallels between embryological and evolutionary development, so obviously there was a time when our ancestors were barely cognizant with only basic mammal intelligence like we had. Look, just because you don't have enough awareness doesn't mean you're not conscious. Just because you make the AI able to do things better than any human can in any field doesn't mean it's conscious. You dumbass jackass. At an infancy. Either way, it is so obvious that consciousness came from the development of the brain. Yet religious believers still pretend that it comes from somewhere else. Even when you all know better, seems the real answer isn't good enough. No, 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 no. The brain is the brain is the consciousness, but the television set television set is the television rate waves. Just because you cut the, the goddamn TV off doesn't mean the waves are not there. Religion is required beliefs and prohibited beliefs, meaning that you're not allowed to accept or understand certain things, and you face the threat of a fate worse than death if you... Now I can agree with that. Religion is... I hate religion. But atheists are typically free thinkers following truth. Bullshit. You will not allow yourself to think that there's a possibility of there being a God. You're not real. You're not real free thinkers. If everyone was a true free thinker, some people would, would arrive at the conclusion that there is a God. Others would arrive at the conclusion that there is no God. Wherever it leads, there, there is, is no question you can answer, answer but that we can't. Because bullshit. There is. You motherfuckers cannot answer. You y'all y'all motherfuckers cannot debunk J. Harold Smith's evidence of God killing people for refusing to get saved and blaspheming the Holy Spirit. You are not telling me what's scientifically happening there. There is no truth. Except to say the stories never happened. Because if the stories happened, they'd throw a monkey wrench in your precious philosophy. 
truth we need fear like you do. There are questions believers can't answer, but free thinkers can because we can accept the real explanation. Uh, I can't take him. Take no more. It's just drivel. I was conducting a revival, a associational wide revival sponsored by the 27 Baptist churches in that parish in Louisiana. You know, in Louisiana, they do not have counties like we have in North Carolina. They have parishes. And this was a parish-wide revival. And we had come to the last night of the meeting, and I was preaching this sermon, and the meeting was being held in the rodeo arena. And as I preached, on the last tier of seats, over to my right, on the last row, top seats, were three men that I'd never seen before. And they had laugh and make fun. Now, preacher, it has never bothered me when a little baby starts crying and the mother gets up and walks out. That don't bother me. But under God, I cannot preach if I see two young people laughing. I cannot preach if I see anybody mocking. It just somehow or another takes it away from me. Three times. I stopped. And I said the last time, if you men don't want to hear me preach, a lot of these people have come from miles to be here tonight. And they do. Would you just get up and walk out of the arena? One of them said, if you think you're man enough to come up here and put us out, you just come up here. And I prayed a prayer. Never have prayed before, never have prayed since. I said, dear Jesus, let me backslide for 15 minutes. And I promise you, Lord, if you'll let me backslide for 15 minutes, I'll go up there and beat the devil out of all three of them. And God said, I didn't call you to fight, I called you to preach. He said, you turn them over to me. And I did. And they continued to mock all the way through the sermon. We had over 400 people to walk down that aisle that night and give their hearts to Jesus Christ. I fully intended to never show them enough attention to address them again. But just as I was ready to pronounce the benediction, my arm came up. Preacher, did anything ever come out that you hadn't planned to say? That you couldn't help but say it? <laughs> Has that ever happened to you? But How many of you preachers here have ever had something just come out that you didn't have in your notes and it just, just came out? Yes, every preacher, every God called preacher has. And my arm just came out and I said, I don't know who you three gentlemen are. But all three of you stepped over God's deadline, God signed your death warrant, and God's going to kill all three of you. That was about 10, 15 Sunday night. At 8 o'clock the, the next morning, I didn't know who these men were. They were three businessmen. One of them put the key in the door of his office on Main Street, in Ringo, Louisiana, and dropped dead. At 11.30, the second man started across the street to a little restaurant to have his lunch from his office. And a lady was driving up the street and almost ran over him. She said he just walking along normal, fed flat on his face, and died right there in the street. At 5.30 that afternoon, the third man was sitting in his office and he said to his secretary, My two friends are in hell, and before the sun goes down, I'll join them. And pitched out at her feet a corpse. My wife was with me in a revival. We had closed the revival meeting on, on, on that Sunday night, and we had driven about a hundred miles to a little country church to begin a revival meeting on Monday night. And there were no motels within 25 miles of that little country, that little country church. And we were staying in the home of the of the pastor. We had preached on Monday night. We had come back to the parsonage. We had had some refreshments, and we had gone to the room that had been assigned to us for our bedroom when I heard the telephone ring. And I heard the preacher when he answered, he said, No, I'm not going to call him to this telephone. He is so weary and so tired, I'm not going to call him. Unless it's an emergency. And the party on the other end of the line said, It's an emergency. And when I got there, it was a pastor of the First Methodist Church. And he told me what I've told you. And he said, Brother Harold, our whole parish is in uproar. So we had a meeting with tonight with, with a number of the preachers and we tried to rent the rodeo arena for next Sunday night but we can't have it but my auditorium is the largest and would you come back next Sunday night and preach? 
I turned around to the pastor and he gave me the, uh, the consent to close the meeting on Sunday morning. My wife and I drove back that hundred miles. We left in order that we might get there about 30 minutes before the service to begin that night. When we drove up, there were over 1,500 people in that yard. They couldn't get in that building. And they said, the people have been here for over an hour and a half, preacher. Not a person, not another person could get in that auditorium. I got down and started walking down, sliding down the aisle, sidewise, my wife and I. And the man that was in charge said, preacher, don't sit down. Just come on and preach. And before I could open my Bible and read one scripture, 17 men jumped up out of that audience and ran down that aisle just as fast as they could get down there, saying, we want to get saved. There, there is, is no, no question, question you can, can answer, answer but that we can't. Because bullshit. Aaron Ra, Matt Dillahunty, there are too many stories. There are multiple stories by multiple pastors like this. And only in Christianity. Never in Mormonism. Never in Hinduism. Never in, never in Islam. Never in Voodoo. There are multiple stories like that in true Christianity. Not the Joe Osteen type of Christianity, but true Christianity. Where people had been killed for refusing to get saved. Killed in mysterious, frightening ways. Where people have been killed for saying the works of God. Or the, where people have been killed for saying the works of the Holy Ghost or the works of the devils. There are too many stories like this. Every one, every one of these people are not lying. So... Jimmy Snow, when you say these stories never happen, that makes me wish murder was legal because I'm going to kill you for not answering my question. Something's happening scientifically. Now, if there is no God, I want to know. I want to know because the thought that there is a God killing people just because they don't get saved really bothers me. But, like I said, the evidence is there. It only happens in Christianity. The Mormon God has never killed anybody. The Hindu God, Voodoo's God has never killed, killed anybody. But there are, are documented cases scientifically of Voodoo deaths where belief in Voodoo killed people. So Aaron Ra, expand your fucking mind and investigate and give me a goddamn answer if you're smart enough, you son of a bitch. And if you can't, I hope you get brain cancer and lose that fucking brain. I'm I'm serious. I I hate you. I want to find the truth. I hate you for ignoring my question not, and not giving me an answer. You are supposed to be the brilliant new genius. I hate you. I hate you for not giving me the answer. I wish you and Matt Dillahunty would get a brain cancer if you don't give me the fucking answers.